Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I want to show you how to edit photos just in your iPhone camera roll photo app. So whenever you're working in a photo, you can always tap on the top right where it says edit, and it'll open up all of the editing options just in the photos app. So there's actually a lot of powerful things available here, not even in Lightroom or Photoshop or something. So firstly, you can just do auto. It'll try to automatically boost up the contrast and whatnot, which looks pretty good for this photo, honestly, but I never like to do things too automatically. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through everything that is available though. So there's a few different tabs you have here. So in the bottom left here with that dial, you have some of the most basic settings like exposure, brightness, contrast. In the middle, you have different filters that come available. And in the bottom right, you have one of the most useful ones, which is crop. So this is just if you wanted to crop into a certain part of the photo, or if you wanted to make it square or different sizes, 16 by nine, um, different ratios. So this is useful if you know you wanted to make it a square image for social media. And also in the top left, you have some tools for flipping horizontally, rotating it upside down or sideways. Aside from the ratio, if you tap that again, you can also adjust the rotation angle and also the kind of skew and stretch of it. If you did have some sort of lens distortion on your image, this can fix it. Or I suppose you could use it as a creative effect if you wanted, but I'm gonna cancel. I don't wanna make any sort of crops and we're gonna start back to the basic adjustment section if we didn't need to crop. So firstly, we have the exposure. This can brighten or darken the image. Pretty useful. A lot of times you might just need to brighten the exposure overall. And next we have the brilliance. This is kind of like the vibrance of the image. You can see it's kind of like darkening. It's kind of like brightening and saturating the image at the same time. You can see it only affects certain portions. Like if I turn it all the way down, it still doesn't affect the brightest highlights. So it only affects a certain range of the image. And if I ever tap again on those circles, you can see I can turn them off or on if I didn't want them or I can just bring them back down to zero if I kind of want to reset them. Next up, we have highlights and shadows. So the highlights will increase just the highlights or darken them. So these can be useful when you have kind of an overblown sky or something like that. Uh, in this case, it's a nighttime shot. So maybe I just want to increase the shadows so you can see some more texture in the shadows. And I wouldn't really need to do anything to the highlights, but I can darken the highlights a bit if I want. If you had a photo with an overblown sky, you might want to reduce the highlights and maybe not touch the shadows. It allows you to separate the shadows and highlights so you don't have to brighten and darken the whole image, which can be useful in certain cases. Next up, we have contrast. A lot of times when you do mess with the brightness and exposure, you lose some of that contrast and saturation. So this can make the darks a little darker and the brights a little brighter. If you ever want to see before and after as you're editing, you can just tap on the original photo so we can see original and where we are at so far. So you can kind of see what you've done. Again, you have brightness, just overall brightening or darkening of the image. Black point is useful to lift up the entire black point. So if I increase it, you see it gets a lot more contrasted. But if I decrease the black point, then we have this overall gray fade that happens. You can see there's no longer any true black in the image. It's more like a faded kind of washed out look that happens. It's um, on Instagram and other apps. You might, this might be called fade. Uh, you can use it for a lot of vintage type of effects because when we get into some of the other color boosts, um, we can tint those grays into different colors. Next up, we have saturation. So this just allows us to make our photo black and white or saturated even more. You don't want to overcook the image so that it looks unnatural like this usually but this can be good for a black and white. And you can see the black and white mixed with the black point. You can see the difference between a very high contrast black and white versus a kind of black point black and white. Just two different styles, but even from the original, you can see we have so much more creative control than you'd expect out of just the camera roll app. Vibrance is kind of like saturation. It's trying to boost up the colors, but Vibrance will not boost up all the colors like saturation. So you might not affect skin tones as much. It'll just kind of affect more of, of the middle tones. Warmth allows you to adjust the white balance kind of. So you can take it to be more warm. You get this overall red hue, which actually looks kind of good in this photo. Or you can take it to be cooler. 
and more blue. So you can use it for that creative look to make it more warm or cool. Or if you happen to shoot a photo and it looked a little too blue or a little too red, you can use it to correct and fix the white balance. So more in a corrective way. Tint is also another white balance fixing tool. So it'll take things to be more magenta or purplish or more green looking. So this is just kind of a more advanced touches for fixing white balance. If you needed to add or remove either of those tints to the image, um, mixing it with the warmth. So the warmth and the tint can help you correct the white balance or add your own sort of tint and warmth to it. Sharpness just allows us to increase the overall sharpness. And if we zoom into the image while we're editing, we can kind of see this is no sharpness, but with sharpness, you see all that texture kind of pop. Um, you never just, just always never try to cook your image too much. Subtlety is always nice, but so far we do have a cool look going on, I think. Definition as well will kind of increase the contrast between pixels, kind of like sharpness, but it's not actually sharpening. It's just darkening darks and lightening lights a bit next to each other, kind of around the edges of the photo. Noise reduction, if you shot a photo at night and it happened to be really grainy, you can try to increase the noise reduction. This doesn't really have too much noise anyway. And vignette will just allow you to add a little bit of shadow around the edges of the photo, kind of allowing you to focus into the center of the image. If you take it the other way, negative vignette, it'll add like a white halo around the photo. So either of those just kind of, sometimes when you have a photo with a open sky, a light vignette will give you some of that little gradual shift of dark to lighter contrast, which helps kind of draw your eye into the center of the image. So a vignette can be nice in subtle ways. And that's everything in the basic correction section. I'm simply using all of them at once, but really you're, you don't always need to use all of them at once. Sometimes you just need to maybe boost the contrast a tiny bit or boost the saturation up a tiny bit or just fix the white balance. So editing a photo does not mean you have to touch it at all or touch every single slider. Next up in the middle, we have some of the filters. So original, you can add some of the filters they have. And as you're on the filter, you can turn it down from zero to 100 strength. And you'll notice this is being applied on top of all the basic corrections that we have. So we have vivid, warm, cool, dramatic, different cool filters. Like I think that looks pretty good. Um, you also have your different monochromatic and black and white ones. You have kind of silver tone kind of like a black and white film, but with a little bit of metallic blue and noir. So just different sort of contrast in the black and white. I think all of these look pretty cool, but you don't have to add any of them either. Um, that looks pretty cool, I think. I'll, I'll add that. And then again, like I said, you have the crop tools if you needed to crop or straighten into a certain point. So I'm not going to crop. I'm just going to leave it as it was. So I'm going to turn that off. But that's the fully finished image. If you ever go back to edit, in the bottom right corner, you'll see that I can click revert. And in the top right corner, you can see that I can export it out. If you have other apps, like different Photoshop or apps, you can export out from the camera roll to other apps. Or if you click markup, uh, you can scribble and draw on your image if you wanted to. These are just different apps, depending on, I think, your iOS. but if for some reason you wanted to write on your image, you could do that as well. But I'm going to click cancel. And that's basically a full walkthrough of how to edit and adjust your photos in the camera roll app. Really useful if you don't have any of these fancy apps or Lightroom. I think Lightroom is free though, but sometimes you do just need to crop, boost the contrast, or do something simple in the camera roll app. And a lot of these tools are universal throughout any photo editing app. So if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other tutorials in the playlist on my channel. Subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new videos. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.